Jennifer once again. So happy to be here once again. I appreciate um, the first lady in the house and uh, Apostle Francis. Actually, they are the force that brought me to the United States again. <laughs> I, I, we were having a program in Ohio and some issues were there, but they came into the matter and that's why I'm here. And it's so nice to be here again. I appreciate you guys for your love, your care, and in so many ways you have enabled us back over there. The Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. The Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. Um, this morning, I bring you greetings from Nigeria, from my family uh, back home. I'm sure right now they will be watching, and so many of them. Uh, we well, thank you for what you are doing for the kingdom of God. I want to just, will I call it a message? I came to the United States with two messages. Uh, and anywhere I go, I ask God, which one? He said this. So I go with that. So I didn't write or ask God for any message while I'm here. Because already I've got what I have to preach anywhere I go. Um, that's how I operate. But one thing with me is that God operates in diverse ways. He gives men different kinds of gifts. For me, wherever, wherever I go, wherever I go, especially if I'm out of my vicinity, the first thing God does for me is to give me an idea of the spirit holding the spirit that operates in that atmosphere is a gift. I don't need to close my eyes or have a dream for him to say. And when I step into um, Chicago, I think yesterday, I wasn't sleeping. I saw. I will add that to the message. It was not originally there. But thank God is in line. The atmosphere in Illinois is being covered with masquerades. I don't know what masquerade depicts in this place, but in Africa, we know what masquerade is. I saw masquerades. Lord, what is this? You decode it. The spirit that want to incite fear into men and keep them in bondage. The spirit of the occult that threatens anything God. Well, by the grace of God, we are not victims. We are victors. Praise the Lord. I want to announce to somebody this morning, I don't know what is threatening you. I don't know what is putting you or keeping you in bondage. But I say in the name of the Lord, you are loose. I want to hear a bigger amen. You are loose. You are loose. In the name of Jesus. Somebody you will receive a miracle today. God didn't tell me right now. He told me this morning when I woke up. He said, there's somebody, maybe it's me. Maybe it's you. He said, there's somebody today you will receive a miracle. In the name of Jesus, receive it now. Receive it now. From tomorrow Monday, it will begin to manifest. In the name of Jesus Christ. Can you echo a bigger amen? 
Now, the title of my message is Keeping the Fire of God Burning in Your Life. Hallelujah. Keeping the Fire of God Burning in Your Life. A lot of people today, the fire has gone off. Last year, 2022, the Lord opened my eyes to see a revelation that spoke up and gave me the background to this message. In that revelation, he took me into, it was like a hall of this size, but dark. It was dark. And each place you get to, you will see a light that will reveal certain things to you. As you get out of that place, that place becomes dark again. So I was moving and seeing several things that were beyond my understanding. I didn't understand what I saw. Until I go to a certain place in that hall, the place became bright again. And I saw a candle stand. You know, the kind of candle stand we see in Israel. You know, they are, they are those candlesticks. But this time it was not seven stand. It was two. And the candle was on it burning burning and I was watching if I could hear a voice or something to understand what that means as I was watching the candle burn and went down and went down and went off and suddenly another candle came up and was burning the other one went down went down and burnt off and suddenly another candle came up there I was still imagining, Lord, what is this all about? And he said to me, the candlestick is me, the Lord. Anyone who is on this stand, though trials will come, though pressures will mount, though challenges will rise, but as long as you are on this candle stand, your light can never go off. And even if it goes up, it will rise again. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord deliver him from them all. And I woke up and began to think. No matter the situation we find ourselves, so long as we stay strong in Christ, we cannot be overcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then I decided to write this message. Asking the Holy Spirit to guide me on making it up. Praise the Lord. So when we say fire, you know, fire. God always manifests with a symbol of fire. When he called Moses, he took Moses to a place where there was fire, but yet the things were not burned off. God manifests in several ways, and many a times, fire. So sometimes we say fire of the Holy Ghost. We say power of God. So what we are saying when we say fire this morning, and we are using it symbolical, but it represents the on the unction of the Holy Spirit. How, your, the, how the power of God can stay with you without going off. How you can keep the power of God with you anywhere you go. What is this fire? The unction of the Holy Ghost. The power of God. The presence of God. You know, when Moses was called, Moses had an argument with God. He said, Father, I cannot 
fulfill this kind of assignment is bigger than me. Me to Pharaoh. No. And God says you must go. You must go. And what is the message to say, Pharaoh, you must let my people go. Praise the Lord. And when the argument became tough, Moses understood that he had no choice than to go. So Moses requested the Lord, if I must go, I need your presence. If your presence will not go with me, I go nowhere. So when we say fire in this sense, we are talking about the presence of God. How you can live in this wicked world. How you can operate in this wicked world without the fire of God going off from your life. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First Chronicles 16 verse 20. And when they went from nations to nations and from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to harm them. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. If you must walk from nations to nations, if you must fulfill the, the assignment or the commission of God for your life, God must anoint you. You must go with the influence of the Holy Spirit. You must carry along the fire of God with you. With that, no man, no power, no forces can harm you. Touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. If you are not with the anointed, there may be calamity. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is a high demand for the power of God, for the fire of God, for the unction of the Holy Spirit. There is a higher demand. And I will say to you, you cannot survive. You cannot make it in this end time without the fire of God in your life. You can't. The enemy is getting wiser. The enemy is getting more, more technology. Spirit technology. You know, the world today is improving and is growing in technology. But sometimes you got to know that the technologies you are finding here has already existed in the spirit realm. We are just happy is in the spirit realm. The devil has gone so wide and so fast in technology that without the fire you can't beat him. Yes. That's true. Amen. You go to the airport, you are traveling, they just pick a little piece of uh, cotton and dip it into a thing and touch your bag and just touch your floor and put it there. And he just analyzes everything you are and everything you are carrying. They don't need to bring, uh, you know, touch and start checking your bag anymore. Technology has gone far. The devil has also gone sophisticated. Not that we are glorifying the devil. Not that we are exalting him. But we are trying to open the eyes of believers to know that the days are evil. And so, therefore, you don't need to play church. You don't need to play uh, church. You, 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 ought to, you ought to have a personal relationship with God in order to carry God's fire. Praise the Lord. The demand for fire on our altars. 
Every child of God should have an altar. As a church, we have a collective altar. As a family, we have the altar. But as an individual, you got to have your own altar. You need to know Jesus personally. Praise God. It's not all the time we need to call man of God, pray. Man of God, pray. Now, there, need, there, there should be a time you take the devil by the horns and say, Satan, I'm a child of the living God. You have no right to be in my property or in my life. Praise the Lord. We, 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 no minister in this end time can survive without the fire of God. No minister of God can survive without the fire of God in your life. No minister. I'm emphasizing on that. No man of God. No daughter of God can survive this end time without the fire of God in your life. Amen? Amen. What is God's fire? We've told you his presence. Without fire, you will die a shameful death. We saw the life of Samson in the Bible. When he lost the power of God, he died a shameful death. That will not be your portion. Can you say a better amen? amen? That will not be your portion. That will not be my portion. In the name of Jesus. A child of God without fire is a prey to the devil. The devil comes at will and whatsoever he wants to do, he accomplishes. Jesus said he came. So it's not a new thing. Jesus said he came, but finding nothing of his property, he got to do what? Leave. Because there was much fire. Praise the Lord. And if you study the life of Jesus, there's, a, there's always a time he withdraws because he feels there is need to ignite more fire. He withdraws. There's a time he was in a crowd. Somebody touched him. He turned back and said, who touched me? What do you think? The fire in him went down. So he felt something has gone out of me. And he shouted, who touched me? That tells us that there is a time in our life we need to withdraw. In order to do what? To fan up the fire of God in our life. There is a time we need to go closer to carry or to get more of God's presence in our life. Amen. Remember Moses, once in a while, high to the mountain to see who? To talk with God, to commune with God, to have fellowship with God. And when he's coming back, even Moses will not, does not know how much of the fire of God he was carrying. So he came back and said, church, hello, I just, I just went to have a quiet time with God and I'm back. And anybody Moses was talking to was fleeing. <laughs> they were running off. And Moses said, what's wrong with these people? Then he, he, he called uh, Aaron, Aaron, I'm back. And Aaron saw him and fleed. <laughs> he saw Miriam. Miriam and by, everybody running. So he asked Joshua, what's happening? He said, the fire and glory of God 
is all over you. So Moses had to do what? Took a veil so that I can contain these people. There are some people in our lives that 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 wants to put off fire. But so therefore, I once in a while you need to to go to the secret place, to go to the altar, and do what? Pray. Pray. Seek his face and recharge. Amen. Amen. Your, your phone, handsets, you need to recharge it once in a while to keep it on. Sin is our lives with God. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. He said without fire, you cannot survive. Satan fears a man of God with fire. Satan fears a child of God with fire. When you carry the presence of God, even the enemy cannot look you eyeball to eyeball. I don't know, but that's what, that's what, that's what I experienced. When you look at the devil-possessed man or a devil-possessed woman, and you need to know that some people are possessed with the devil just as you are possessed with the spirit of God. So when you come in confrontation with them, they can't look you eyeball to eyeball. In Nigeria, we will say, who born you? Praise the Lord. Who is your father to look at me? Eyeball to eyeball. So when you carry the fire of God, the devil is afraid of you. You don't need to be afraid of Satan because Jesus has done it, has done the work, has this, you understand. But now the devil comes like a masquerade to threaten someone, to make you to be afraid, not to walk in the boldness Christ has offered you. Don't be afraid, child of God. Let me give you a short story. It's not in my message. One time, a masquerade came into the market in Africa, Nigeria. <laughs> so the masquerade came into the market and was threatening everybody. I was threatening everybody. So if you are passing, the masquerade blocks you and ask you to drop some money or you will not pass. The masquerade was so mad. The masquerade was so mad. So the masquerade was so mad, was going all around the marketplace. So the masquerade now came in, advanced and saw a young man. A young man who is also a madman, a masquerade. <laughs> Are you getting it? Yeah. You know, you can be a masquerade for Satan or a masquerade for Jesus. Yeah. They, are big ma they are big heavenly made masquerades. The devil can't look at them. The enemy cannot block the way for them. If they block the way, once you are coming, they give way. Somebody from today, anywhere you enter, the devil will give way for you in the name of Jesus Christ. So this masquerade was terrorizing everybody. And then it, it came to this young man. And the young man said, Kuro lono fumi. Meaning, get out of my way. And the masquerade did. Uh, 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 uh. And the young man said, Kuro lono fumi. Meaning, get out of my way. So the masquerade was, you know, because every other person were afraid. And so he wants to still maintain the, the, his profile, you know, big masquerade. So this young man said the third time, Munye Kuro lono fumi. Meaning, I say, get out of my way. And the masquerade thought it was a joke. The young man just carried the masquerade up and hit him onto the ground and walk away. Sometimes we need to deal with any masquerade that is terrorizing us. Either at the working place, either in your house, either at school, wheresoever you are, that a masquerade is terrorizing you, 
in the name of Jesus, I smash that masquerade in Jesus' name. So shall it be. From today, you are the bigger masquerade. In the name of Jesus. A louder amen. The demand for fire in your life. Praise the Lord. We are in the New Testament. We are New Testament believers. Jesus has paid the price. But we have our own, we have our own duty. We have our own, our, we, 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 are, we have our own assignment to maintain our Christianity, our faith, our, our, the glory of God in our life. You don't just fold your hand and say, Jesus has done it all. He has done it all. But you need to do some certain things to sustain what Christ has done for you. You understand that? You don't just fold your hands and say, Christ has done it all. No. There are things you need to do. Jesus has done it all, but Jesus will not pray for you. You need to sustain your prayer life. Are you getting that? Jesus, we, there are assignments that he has given to every child of God. There are missions. There are uh, in your destiny. God has attached a mission, an assignment you must do. And you must not fail him. You must not fail God. You must not. Yeah. I've told people salvation is free. But reward is not free. Okay. Salvation is free. He has given to everyone. Whosoever believes in him is saved. But rewards are not free. I can't reward you freely. Then it's not a reward. <laughs> Praise God. Now, if I must reward you, I will reward you on the basis of the work you've done. So he has given every one of us an assignment and say, he that overcomes will now receive those rewards. So when we get to heaven, there's going to be a judgment concerning our works. You know, so that we as a child of God can receive those things he has promised us. Praise the Lord. Are you getting it? So sometimes we need to draw, we need to draw inspiration from the Old Testament. Most of the Old Testament assignments are, we know that we are for things that will come. Some of those things were shadows of things that will come. But that does not mean we will close our eyes from learning from those things. Praise the Lord. So let us see Leviticus 10, 1 to 3. My correct Leviticus chapter 3, chapter 10, 1 to 3. Or oh, let me take you Leviticus chapter 6, 12 down. 6, Leviticus chapter 6, 12 down. I read. I'm trying to break it for time's sake. And uh, you can read. Okay. I read. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. And the fire upon the altar. This is God's command to the children of Israel. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn thereon the fats of the peace offering. 13. 
the fire shall ever be burning, shall ever. You know, I, I belong to the King James family. I don't, I don't know what your own is saying, but we are the same. We are on the same track. Praise the Lord. It says, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. I wish we can see another translation. What is God saying here? Talking about the Old Testament priesthood, how the fire must be on the altar and the fire must never go out. What is the symbolic fire? Fire purifies things. Fire burns things. Fire consumes things. And fire keeps things warm. Praise the Lord. So what is God trying to say? Things. What is God trying to say? I've told you we all have our altars. You should have your altar. You should have your place of, your place. An altar is a place of communion where spirit and man meets. And as I said, as a family, the king's court. We have our altar. We see it physically, but they're still spiritual. Praise the Lord. Now, as a, as a child of God, you ought to have your altar, your place of prayer, and your time to meet with God, a place you hear him. And many a times for genuine Christian of God, you have your prophet. When you can't hear well, you go to him. Are you hearing me? Praise the Lord. Now, God is saying upon the altar, the fire must never go out. Your prayer life must never dwindle. Your prayer, your communion with God must never go out. And if you read that story, you see a certain day came, children of Aaron came with all kinds of fire, fire of madness, fire of immorality, fire of, you know, fire of dirtiness, fire of lying, and came to the altar and released the fire. The fire of God came down and consumed them. That is to tell you, on the holy altar, you must not bring the fire of confusion. You must not bring the fire of darkness. You know, some churches, we don't want to go into that. You must not bring any strange fire to the altar of God. Because in his presence, he will destroy whosoever that brings a dirty fire on the altar. Praise the Lord. Therefore, the fire must keep burning and you must burn the wood. You must put the things together. Remember the story of Elijah? Whosoever is on the Lord's side, come this way. You remember the story of Elijah? Where is the Lord God of Israel? He first put the woods together and asked those prophets of Baal, do yours, do what you can do. And when they could not do nothing, he put the, the woods in order. As children of God, we must always put things in our life in order. There's a time devil comes to mess our life. Uh, agents of darkness try to infiltrate into our life. But mind you, put the woods in order and burn the fire. And he said to the priest, every morning you must burn the fire. What is he talking about? You need to pray. Pray in season. Out of season. Your fire must never go out. The altar of God or the altar of your prayer life must always be with the fire. It must never go out. Praise God. We have a lot of things that always put our fires off. A lot of things that can put off your fire. Be careful and be warned. I just have to give you a little so that you take note of them. We talk of sin. What is sin? 
when you indulge in anything that is not pleasing to God is sin. You still tell lies as a child of God is an error. You still abuse as a child of God is an error. You still manipulate as a child of God is an error. Anything that will not please God, put it away from you. That will off and quench your fire. Put it away. Number two, family problems. If you allow the family problems to cloud your mind, if you allow the pressures of family, the pressures of the problems around you to cloud your mind, they will put up the fire. So many a times you need to know or remember, Jesus said, my peace I give unto you, not as the world gives. Now, if you have the peace of God in you, you don't need to be worried and carried away by family problems. Hand it over to God at the altar and God will take care of it all. Praise the Lord. Can somebody shout hallelujah? hallelujah. Something, sometimes also discouragement. Discouragement. Discouragement can put up the fire of God in man's life. I don't know if those in America, Chicago here, if you normally have discouragement. Because I see everything is just going on smooth. <laughs> Praise God. I see everything is just nice and smooth. Like we went to our conference in Ohio. Before you enter for the conference, you go and eat first. <laughs> and all of us from Nigeria say, wow. Before you go to church, you eat first. I say, well, is there a time we call, we'll start to get to that level. <laughs> Praise God. And uh, one, two, three days in that program, I never heard, oh, Satan, I bind you. We don't bind him. Well, everything just smooth, no binding, no losing. But when you get to Africa, you bind and you lose. Praise God. Because you will see a lot of mass grace everywhere. A lot of challenges everywhere. But in all this, we are more than conquerors. So be mindful of discouragement. Sometimes the devil just shoots the arrow on the person and you are so discouraged about things that you are no longer aware of the blessings of God around you. I've been there. You just can't see the blessings of God around you. All you see is, oh God, I'm, oh God, I'm, the world is against me. The people are every. You can't see any longer. That's what discouragement does. Discouragement can blind you, blindfold you from the goodness of God around you that you begin to wish, oh God, I want to die. Wow. You remember the story of the prophet in the Bible? It says, oh God, they have killed all the prophets. Ah, I'm the only one left. Why am I still here? Just take my life, oh God. And as children of God, there are levels you reach, you must not say, you must not speak anyhow. Because everything you say, God takes it. Yeah. When you are growing up as a child of God, you say, oh God, ah, he will just leave you alone. You shout, oh God, ah, oh Lord, I'm hungry. He just provides food for you because he's treating you as a baby. As a baby. But as you begin to grow up in Christ, you must be careful of what you say. Don't speak anyhow. Because God might suddenly hear you. And approve it. Oh God, I'm done. I'm done. It's only me. Oh God, everyone is gone. Let me. What am I doing here? I want to die. Take my life. God's okay. Approve. Approve. Make preparation, angels. Bring that guy home. And he was wondering, did he approve it? 
Lord, I was just joking. <laughs> it was discouragement, Lord. He said, no, you need to come home. Wow. Go to number, so so place, 65 Street Road. You see a young man walking there. Anoint him. And he said, okay, Lord. Wow. But won't you change your mind? He said, no. Whatsoever you say will be done. So he, he got to the place and saw Elisha doing his business, a wealthy farmer. And he said, boy, are you Elisha? Say yes, sir. Say come here. He brought out the oil, poured it on him and did whatsoever he did and said, come, follow me. The guy said, no, I can't come follow you. It's okay, you'll be there. Maybe God will change his mind. <laughs> you know, he, he, he thought, since the guy refused to come, Maybe God will change his mind. I will continue my ministry. <laughs> but he didn't know. When God approves, nobody can change it. So, Elisha had his time, had fun, did party, and then went looking for Elijah. And then Elijah also felt all the strength I've gathered, all the wisdom I've gathered, all the anointing I've gathered. I won't give it to this boy. I'll take it to him. So let's go. And Elisha made up his mind. I must collect. So when he noticed his behavior, this guy is different from all the rest um, disciples. So other disciples, do you know your master will be, Shh, don't let him know I know. <laughs> Keep quiet. Follow me. Then as he was going, he was going with him. He said, why are you following me? He said, ah, master, I must follow you. <laughs> so I said, okay, what do you want? So that I can say to you, go back. Mm -hmm. The guy said, I need the double portion of your anointing. <laughs> why didn't Elijah just hand it over? Wow. He said, if you see me, wow. go. You collect it. If not, I can't give it to you. Wow. Why? He was not satisfied of going. But he was the one who made the, who wrote the application. So be careful how you talk. Be careful what you say when you are discouraged. Because it can be taken account of. May God help us. Because many a times in our discouragement, we just say things. I've done that. But thank God, he didn't sign it. <laughs> I've done several things when I'm discouraged. Several. <laughs> Praise God. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Things that we put off the fire. Don't be over worried. Don't be over worried about things you cannot do. Don't be over worried. By experience, I've come to know that no matter what happens, God will do what he wants to do in my life. No matter what happens, what he has said he will do, he will do. Even if I decide to say I don't want to move again, if God wants to take me to Tarshish or Nineveh, I must reach there. No matter what Jonah did, God took him by fire, by force. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So in all things and in all your desires, don't be over worried. When you are over worried, you burn out. Don't be. And don't be too entangled with the world. Don't be too involved with the world that you have no time again to refresh your fire. Don't be too entangled with business. Business is good. But don't be too entangled that you no longer go to church because of business. 
while you were poor, God blessed you. And the purpose of God's blessing in your life is so that you can be a channel of blessing to the church. That's the reason. It's not so that you will give pastors excuses. And why many people stay in the, in the class of poverty for a long time is because they have failed to pass their exams in order to receive wealth. If you fail in your exam, God gives us exams from season to season. One time in my life, many years ago, when I started new, maybe, maybe, I, I think, let's just say 18 years ago, I one day was so vexed and I cried unto the Lord, why am I this, in this, why am I on this level for so this long? And I heard the voice, pass your exam and you will be promoted. Then the next fearful thing that I had again is God will never grow old. You are the ones that will be old and worn out. And if you like to stay in one class for 50 years, that's your, that's your cup of tea. I became so fearful that I, it is you that will grow old and burn out. The Lord is forever the Lord is ancient of days. The youngest, oldest man that is sitting right there. If you mess around with your calling, you will remain there till you burn out. So wake up. Pass your exams. And I started to operate like a madman. And I, everybody around me, we have no time. Bro, we don't have time. Bro, we don't have time. Oh, no. And if you try to slow me down, I will remind you that we are not going to be here for long. Just a little while. Our life is just like a candlestick that will burn out. How long? Hundred? Do you have how many people around your community that is hundred years? So how do you think you will be more than hundred? Wake up. Pass your exam. So that God can take you to another level. Yes, Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. God is great. God is merciful. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about how to contact fire. Or how to increase your fire. How can I increase the power of God on my life? How can I increase the presence of God upon me? You see, you need to, a lot of spiritual things are not free. Let's, I don't know, let's branch a little because people understand, most of the time people understand more of the world of darkness than the kingdom of God. So many a time we draw, we draw, uh, illustrations from that angle. You see, these wicked men, these occultic men, these, these um, Satan worshippers or, uh, or terrorists, they are full of zeal. They are full of drive. They are on their toes always. But here are the People, here are the children of the kingdom, lazy. They need one to push them. They, they need a walking on a child. Ah, there was a shower, little rain falling. So I just felt I don't want to go through the rain. The cult doesn't do that. These children of darkness doesn't do that. If they want to take it, it see, I, um, let me take you down to Africa. You see a little. You see, when they, when they initiate a young girl, a young girl, they send that young girl, they make things work out and send that young girl to the home of Christians to become either a maid or what have you. So you see a Christian family full of the Holy Ghost, full of the anointing, 
a young girl comes into their home and begins to operate. So zealous because they need promotion. Hallelujah. In their kingdom, promotion is compulsory. You must you must make progress. You must make progress. If you don't make progress, they punish you. They give you a punishment if you don't make progress. So they assign this young girl, go down home, pull them down. Stop their prayer. It's disturbing our kingdom. Kill them if possible. Destroy them. Make them lose their job. Make them crazy. Make them go into drugs. Make them. They, so they live in that home. Within six months, they have accomplished the assignment. Pull down the Christian family, destroy them, tear down their marriages, make them confused in life, put all kinds of things in them that they can they, they fall out of faith. Yeah. Only two girls of six years have destroyed the people who are supposed to control the community yeah. on their knees. So, you see how zealous they are? How far bent they are? How serious they are? What about you? How lazy we are? How prayerless we are? How confused we are? This is not the will of God for you. How must you keep the fire burning? How must you keep the presence of God with you anywhere you go? We shouldn't be lazy about. There are work to be done. There are work to be done. I want to tell you, any church that is real, I mean, uh, uh, the church of Christ, where the presence of God dwells, that you find yourself it is not by mistake you are there. God also has sent you there to do what? Help to build the fire. Help. There is a, a job for every one of us in the kingdom. There is a job for every one of us in the kingdom. Even if you are not built to come on the altar and preach and sing, there is a lot of job. Even if you check and you don't have a job in the church, bringing people to the church is a job. And all these jobs, little, 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 will help to build the kingdom, to fulfill the mandate. So don't lazy about. Praise the Lord. Don't sit and wait until the apostle come to give me assignment, until they recognize me and give me the microphone, that's when I'm going to show them that I can do better than Sister John. God doesn't operate that way. Just be busy where you are fulfilling your purpose and God will keep promoting you, promoting you, promoting you till you get to a place you can't imagine. When we started many years ago, we said it's about 30 years, about 30 years, many years ago, we were not handling the microphone. We were in the crowd and in the choir. You know, we were promoted from the crowd into the choir. And in the choir, I remember we would just be singing. Sometimes we don't know what we are saying. We don't know the lyrics of the song. It won't. Uh, the, the, this is technology where you see the thing on the screen. Then there was nothing like that. So we'll be singing and at times we don't even know the song we are singing. So we'll just be you know, and it was all fun. And when the Lord saw that we are we were faithful, saw that we were busy, saw that we were, we were serious, saw that that we were ready to go further. We passed our exam and he promoted us. Today, look at where we are. Young boys in one African country that's terrible. Today, we are in the United States still preaching the gospel. Praise the Lord. I don't know how far God wants to take you. 
But you have to rise to that responsibility by starting where you find yourself. Either in the kitchen, be faithful. Be faithful. While I was in uh, Baltimore, I'm learning to pronounce all these states. <laughs> Praise God. While I was in Baltimore, I was with the family of the person who served deeper lives, uh, the general overseer. The woman lived with him as a maid and served faithfully. She shared her testimony, how they will send her to the market to buy food. When they want to do their Easter program, you know, they want to do their, they call it retreat, a big retreat that almost a million people will be attending. This woman was the head cook. She will go to the market, buy. She said, when she goes, and bought a lot of yam. The seller will say, this, this woman, you bought so much. Okay, have extra. He said, instead of her to take the extras for herself, she will mix the extra with the, with the church yams. Why? He said, it's not mine. It's not my money. She will mix it. And when she cook, all other cook will cook and stuff their they are they are take away they stuff it with food and take it away the woman say i will not take anything away and yet i have children as a single mother my children we were starving and people will say you are dumb how can you be doing all the cooking and all this and you won't take food home for your children and she will say because i was not told to take home she was faithful for many years until God saw that her faithfulness has spoken. God promoted them, blessed her beyond measure. Today she lives in luxury as 80 years old woman. And all her job now is to be dancing in the morning and put on the big screen and worship from morning till night and cook for the family. And she served me. And I said, Mama, don't let, don't let America switch off your head. You are old. I, you can't carry the plate for me. Let me carry my plate to the kitchen. And when I wanted to leave, I knelt down. I said, Mama, pray. Mama, pray for me that the grace you have received, that I will get some of it. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know, you need to realize, you need to always know when you meet people who are carrying certain grace to kneel down and say, give me a little. Don't be shoulder high when you have nothing. Praise the Lord. Mama, give me a little of this grace. At least if I can get to 80 and uh, be dancing like you, I'll be grateful. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Amen. How to contact the fire of God. That's what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Moses spent 40 days, 40 nights in the presence of God. Learn to be with God. Learn to create time, spend time in the presence of God. You must be a man or a woman of prayer. Each time Jesus prayed, there's something that normally happens. Each time Jesus goes to a private place of prayer and prayed and prayed all night. The Bible says whenever he comes out, there's a crowd that will follow him. Many of us have not realized any time he goes down on his knee throughout the night and pray, what happened the following day? There's a crowd of people that follow him. Now, when you pray, real prayer, doors will open. Doors will open. Doors will open. 
Amen. You see, before I came to the United States, I desired to attend that program. I desired it for four years now. I've not been here. And not because I didn't have visa. A lot of things came in between. Some financial difficulties. So I've not here COVID, lockdown, so, 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 and so on. So I desired to come, but there was no way. Each people that say, ah, Bishop, are you going? I say, I still want to go, but I'm not set. Till the dying moment, and we were sharing, and but behind it, I have cried to the Lord. I have said, Father, I held him. I shook him. I said, you need to do this. And so when the things began to happen, I still lived in his promise. When I was to go, there was no money. When I was to come, not even a dime. I still believed him. The dying moment, somebody sent me a hundred dollars. I came to this country with a hundred dollars. And I still believe God. And no doubt that he will prosper the journey. Are you getting it? No doubt up to now. No doubt that what he has told me will happen. No doubt. I believe God for a miracle. You don't need to doubt God. If you need his power, you need his prayer, you don't need to doubt him. If you want to go out there and succeed, you don't need to doubt God. Believe that what he says he will do. You don't need to look around and check things and confirm things and check your phone and check your wallet. How can no God works in a mysterious way? And when you want to work with God, you must close your eye and keep working. You know, Peter or Peter. <laughs> you know, when he was when he saw Jesus, he said, It is you. Ask me to come. That's faith. Ask me to come, Lord. So, okay, come. Peter, had, Peter operated on, in an unusual manner and fit. He always says, sometimes he will just do some mysterious thing. And Jesus one time said, ah, this didn't come from you. It came from the Father. So Peter come. So Peter just jumped into the sea and start walking. We can walk on sea. We can walk in the storm. We can walk in the flood. This thing can consume a child of God with fire. And a few minutes later, what did he do? He started to look. You don't walk with God looking. Is it going to work? Is it going to work? Can I check the, let's check the weather, whether it's going to be good? No, no you can ask the weather to favor you. You don't need to check this, check that. But sometimes you need to just check out things so that you know the area of prayer should go. Praise God. So when he began to look, he was now going down. And in his pride, he shut his mouth up and was going down. Sometimes if you find your fire dwindling, going down, you don't need to be shot. You need to cry for help at times. One thing that kills pastors is when they keep quiet and they still pose and they still pretend. And they, that's why so many pastors have gone into fetish thing because they have lost the fire by a way of life and they still want to keep the fire burning without, <laughs> without the fire. So they have to go into all kinds of stuff so Pretend. But that's the way of Balaam. It doesn't end well. Praise the Lord. It doesn't end well. You must be pure. Without purity, you can't see God. You can't see his presence. You can't see his power. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. 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 You must be a man of prayer. You must repair your altar. Keep the woods in order. Keep the woods in order. Keep the woods in order. You, you must drop your love offering continually at the altar. You know, you say you must bring a peace offering. You must keep burning. How do you know people who love God? Number one, if those who love God give to God. You can't love God and you are withholding. Jesus said, God bless everybody that you receive. You can't tell me you again, save your heart, the Holy Ghost, but your pocket is a lie. Show me where your passion and your heart is. That's where your sacrifice goes. So you can't love God. You can't, uh, you can't be, uh, make me a deacon. But your deacon pocket is not yet open. You know, the sacrifice must be on the altar. That's a sign that you love God. And that's how you can increase your fire. Think about Cornelius in the book of Acts. He was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. Jesus must have gone. And look at this man making sacrifice in the name of God that he doesn't even know. And the Bible said, and one day God woke up and said, this man's offering is provoking me. This man's giving has touched the heavens. Send me the apostle to go and put him right, to align him up or in the right way. And you could see immediately Peter got there, opened his mouth to preach. All his household were baptized of the Holy Ghost. Where? How? Because this man has proven his love to God. By his sacrifice. Your sacrifice can speak for you. How does it? Your sacrifice can speak for you. Many are times we labor. In Christ. It's not our church. We grew up where we labored. You know. One thing I've seen is that. You can labor here. And receive your, your, your reward. Somewhere. You don't always want to get your reward with you for it. I've been going to this church. You don't know me. It's not me. The light will not be on. If not me, the equipment has I bought a new one. If not me, if not me. And since then, you have not honored me. Please, I need to honor this or I will leave this church. Error. Praise the Lord. When you labor in the name of the Lord, don't look unto men for reward. If men reward you, they but I expect God to reward me that men do that. Praise the Lord. So don't forget your sacrifice is needed. Your sacrifice is needed. Your sacrifice is needed. Don't look. You know, when we were young, our church location was very far from me. Very far. That at times, I was about 17, 18. At times, I don't have a transport fare to go to church. Do you know what we do? I have one sister, patients. We were all in the choir. So we are living in the same area. So we trek to church. We go on foot, miles, and we will be singing and going. Before we look, we are there. We did it with joy. And then our pastor in those days, if you can remember, we keep us lit. We will rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. Do the rehearsal until 11 in the midnight. He is a witness. And then he closed. 
He lives in the church and he doesn't care <laughs> where we are going. He said, good night, everybody. We say, good night. 11 midnight. And we will trek. Even if we have money in our pocket, there will, there, there's no more bus. So we trek back home and we were doing it with joy. We, we had no reason to complain. And we did it for several years. 15 years. And finally, when God took us to a different direction, he began to reward our labor we've done, we put in somewhere else. So when you are joining hand with uh, Apostle here and uh, our First Lady, and you are making sure everything is working, don't look for reward from their hands because the best is from the Lord. The best is from the Lord. Don't do it and, oh, uh, a prophet, if Deborah is coming, let's keep doing it. Let her see that we're doing it. That is hypocrisy. The Lord doesn't reward that. No. Just put in your best in the name of the Lord. He will come one day. He will remember one day that you're doing a good job. That's Christianity, real Christianity. Amen. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Finally, the benefit of having the fire of God in your life, the benefit, the benefit, the benefit. You know, we as Christians have so much scriptures in our head that sometimes we recite those scriptures and they are not working. <laughs> not that the scripture is not working, but it's not working for you. And the reason is because there's no fire of God in you. Oh, no weapon fashion against me shall prosper. But they are prospering already in your life. Then one day you come to your senses and say, I've been quoting the scripture and nothing has changed in my life. The reason is because you too, you have not changed. Amen. Amen. The benefit of having what? The fire of God in your life. There's benefit. God doesn't leave us empty handed. He's a good God. He's a merciful God. He's a wonderful God. It shows mercy to all that loves him. Even to a thousand generations. Our children will receive the reward of our labor. I don't know if you know. The Bible says a righteous man will leave an inheritance for his children. Children. Not only physical facilities or what have you, but including the anointing. That's why when you find out, when you find some pastors doing great and doing well, the reason is because maybe they are the second generation or third generation pastors whom their grandfather has labored at the altar of prayers. So you see things moving and you, you think, it is for nothing? No. Somebody must have paid the sacrifice. And then when you find those ones who came out, their father is an idolater, their mother is a witch, and so on. And here they are in Christ. They are fighting. You see, binding and losing. And wow. Wow. I did that. My mom wasn't a Christian. My father, zero. <laughs> So we are just the sort of farmer in one village. And then I found myself in Lagos State. I became born again. So I have to do the battle. And sometimes when I travel home, I see all kinds of juju, all kinds of uh, things in the house. And I, I, I pick one. I go outside and drop it. I pick another. And my mother will shout, what are you doing? I say, I'm just helping you to take your God out so that when I'm done, I can go by you, bring them in again. My mother said, go, go, go back to your Lagos. That's where I'm coming from. 
go, go, go back to your Lagos. And then I wasn't a good friend to my mom for that same reason. So I have to do the battle. But I've told my children, I've done all this, that you just go and succeed. Wow. And when my boy got into college, he said, Daddy, I don't think that what favor I'm receiving here is by my own prayer. And I said, boy, I've done all the battle. You just succeed. So you can live an inheritance uh, by sacrifice of prayer for your household and for your children and for your children's children. You don't know. Experience yesterday where I got to. You don't know what I was praying. I said, Lord, I place a sacrifice mountain for my children and my children's children that will ever visit America. So if they ever visit, things will be good, things will be smooth, they ever favor them, the wood will be in their favor, the sun will shine on them as good. You know, things will, just, and they may not know their grandfather or their great grandfather, so they will call me that, have once visited America and prayed at the mountain. They may not know. But I have done it. So what will you do for your children and for those who are coming behind you? It was a wonderful opportunity you gave me yesterday. Hallelujah. God is good. It was in that same place my eyes was open and I saw the masquerade wow. and I said, so you devil, you think you can threaten me? You can't. You know, when you become a fearful Christian, you can't achieve anything in life. No fearful Christian can enter into politics and remain faithful to God. You want to, you want to join them. You want to do what they do because there's threat everywhere. When you want to do sports, there's threat everywhere. But you must be bold like a lion. Praise God. Let me run the benefit of having the fire of God in your life. Uh, we've seen Moses in Exodus 34 verse 33. Exodus 34, 33. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he took off the veil off until he came out. And he came out and speak unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. You see, Moses was so special because he spent time in the Lord, with the Lord. You see, devils will bow before you if you carry the fire. The power of darkness will submit to you if you carry the power of God. The power of darkness will submit to your authority if you do what? Carry the power of God. You know, one time some young guys felt church was a scam or church was a joke. So they, 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 they saw the miraculous in the life of Paul and in his ministry. So they wanted to, you know, to do it. So pra let's practice so that we can make money. Pastors are with money. You know, this church thing is a scam. So they went out on the street and caught a madman and brought the madman home. Let's see, let's practice this thing. They shut the door and began to conjure. They say, you madman, in the name of Jesus, who call you so preach? We say, get out. You know, the devil knows who is real. That's right. yeah. You can't fake. You can deceive man. You can't deceive God. You can't deceive the devil. 
So as they were saying, you devil, and you get out, you darkness, you spirit of madness, in the name of Jesus, who Paul preached out. As they were shouting, the spirit knew this is without fire. There's no anointing. There's nothing in them. They are empty. That's why I said no minister can survive without fire. And they now said to this devil, in the name of Jesus, get out. The devil understood, say, these people don't even understand. Now, who are these people? So, one small demon just got up in the mind and asked them, they look at them, who are you guys? Paul, we know. He said, man of substance, man of the spirit. Jesus, we know. He's the anointed one. Who are you? To command us to get out. One man grabbed, is it seven boys? Seven young men. One man grabbed seven men, not by his own strength, but by darkness, by forces of hell, grabbed them and dealt with them terribly. And then naked them, pull off their clothes. I said, I will disgrace you beyond. You don't come and do church. You don't think we are joking. I will disgrace you. The world will know that you are without fire. Many pastors have been disgraced this day. That's why you hear some funny, funny news, funny, funny story. The devil will come through a lady into their church, manipulate things before you know she's at the altar because the pastor can't see. The pastor can't perceive. The pastor can't, you know, they, before you know, they drag that pastor down. Before you know, they commit war done. Before you know, the news will be up there. And they will justify the lady and condemn the pastor. Wow. The ministry is gone. Wow. You can't mess around with spiritual things without fire. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. And that demon naked the seven sons of Scavers, opened the door and started kicking them out one by one. And they were on their heels. They were running, they were running. And the whole community shouted, what's the problem? That's how we got the news. The whole community ran out and said, ah, what is that? They said, oh, mad man has dealt with the family and gave them, you know. So you cannot, you cannot operate without fire. Praise the Lord. So be anointed. Be anointed. Receive the fire. Receive the power of God in your bones in your flesh, in your spirit, in the name of Jesus. When you have the fire, you will enjoy special grace. You will enjoy health, good health. Are you hearing me? When you have the fire, you will be close to God. When you have the fire, you will be in alignment with God's will in your life. May the fire never depart. May the fire never depart. Second Chronicles 7, 14. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my faith, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sins, and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be opened, and my ears attend unto the prayer that for now have I chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever. And my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. There's the will of God for you. Shall we talk to God? Shall we pray? Shall we pray? We need to follow up this message with strong prayers. We need to follow up this message with crying out unto the Lord. We need to follow up this message with dragging the will of God, the power of God, the anointing of God down into our life. 
which means to say, God, here I am. Heal me up. 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 Open your mouth and begin to pray. Open up your mouth, begin to cry unto the Lord. Say, Lord Jesus, I need your fire in my life. Lord Jesus, I don't need to be afraid of any masquerade. Lord Jesus, I don't need to be afraid of any power from the enemy, any power from darkness, any power from demons, any power of wickedness in the land. I will walk in his power. I will walk in his fire. I will walk in his glory. I will walk in his spirit. Open your mouth. Lift up your hands. Say, Lord Jesus, fill me up to overflow. 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 I am thy, O Lord. I am thy boy. I need to the Lord to be. And as long to run in the earth. Of I be closer from to be from me near near a blessed God to a place where thou draw me near draw me near near a blessed Keep talking to him right now. This moment is your moment. This is your moment to connect. This is your moment to receive. This is your moment to pour out your heart before the altar of this ministry. This is your moment to say, God, I need your fire. Lord, I need your fire. Lord, I need your fire. You see, the Bible said the kingdom of God suffered violence. And only the violence will take it by force. Open your mouth wide and begin to assess the presence of God. Open your mouth wide and begin to take it by force. Talk to him. Talk to him. He is present here. He is present here. Talk to him. Worthy Lord. Worthy Lord. Worthy Lord. Worthy Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Lord, here am I. 
Jeremiah, fill me with your presence. Fill me up with your unction. Fill me up with your power, Lord. Talk to him. I want somebody to say this declaration. Say, Lord, I fear no more. Say, Lord, I fear no more. I can't be afraid anymore. Darkness will threaten me. The righteous is as bold as lion. Say it louder. The righteous is as bold as lion. I will never be afraid again. The atmosphere will not cage me. The power in Illinois will not cage me. I rise above the powers that be. I operate in the heavenly places. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. I want to pray over you. I want to pray over you. Open up your heart. Receive this prayer this morning. I have not come in my own name. I came in the name of Jesus. I'm not here by my own making. Design the design it that I should be here today. And for that purpose, maybe for the purpose of this prayer, for the purpose of this prayer, God has brought me. Lift up your hand, open up your heart. Ah, open up your heart is for you. As I decree, so shall it be. The Lord said, decree you a thing. And I will bring it to pass. And this morning I decree. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Your life shall never remain the same anymore. I can hear a big amen in this house. Can somebody shout amen? Your life shall never remain the same. I decree. As you go, the Lord shall go with you. As you go, his presence shall go with you. He will make the crooked place straight. Yes, he will keep men for your sake. Yes, he will take you up and no man will bring you down. Yes, he will guide you. Yes, he will be on your right hand on your left hand. Yes, the presence of God will go with you. He will give his angels charge over you. And nothing shall by any means hurt you anymore from today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Because it is done. Because it is done. Because it is done. Fire of God. Enter into your people. Fire of God. Anointing of the Holy Ghost. Enter into your people. Fire of God, burn down anything that is unclean, burn down anything that is of flesh, burn down anything that is of darkness, in the name of Jesus. Anywhere the enemy has taken charge, Father, I break their stronghold. Lord, I break the prison yard. I break the prison gate. I set your people loose. I set your people loose. I set your people loose. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Lord, we will never forget this day. Lord, we have testimonies. All through this month. The month of July. Will be your month of surprises. The month of July. We be you, I'm talking to you, we be your month of surprises. In the name of Jesus, God will bring it to pass. That which you have hoped for, that which you have desired for so long, this is your month. This month, it will not pass you by. In the name of Jesus. But the psalmist, I will look up. I will look up. Look up unto the Lord. Unto the hills from whence comes my help. For my help is from the Lord God of hosts. That is your own case. That is you in that scriptures. 
Therefore, from today, look up unto the Lord. He will make the crooked way straight. He will help you when you need him. He will answer you when you call. In the name of Jesus, when you go through stuff, the fire of God will burn. When the enemy stands on your way, the fire of God will clear them. When the enemy come against you, ah, the spirit and the fire of God on you will raise up a standard and scatter the powers and forces of your enemy in the name of Jesus. And when they come through one way, God will scatter them. They will be scattered in seven ways. They will flee in seven ways because they will see the power and the fire of God upon your life. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. So shall it be. Can somebody say, so shall it be three times? Say it as loud as you can. So shall it be. So shall it be. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And amen.